Welcome to part 6 of Test Driven Development in Unity. In this video, we'll be doing lots of refactoring and finally finishing the Heart Container class. Let's start by revisiting Heart Container's replenish method. For one thing, these variable names are ugly and make the logic hard to read. Also, it's missing an important piece of logic, but we'll get to that soon enough. What jumps out at me right now is this calculation right here. It represents the number of empty heart pieces this heart has. We've already got the current number of heart pieces. Now we just need the other side of the equation. Let's add that now. We'll tease out our new property with some tests. We're going to call it empty heart pieces. So let's create a nested class in heart tests called the empty heart pieces property. We'll have it inherit heart tests, which will give us access to a heart and an image that we can use in our tests. Now let's add a simple base case. A heart with an image that's 100% filled has zero empty heart pieces. Let's simulate this by setting the test image's fill amount to 1. Then let's assert that empty heart pieces equals 0. Of course, this won't compile until we create the property, which we'll do now using ReSharper by selecting empty heart pieces, clicking Alt, Enter, and then selecting Create Property. This will generate a method stub, which will have return an int. Let's run the test to ensure they pass. Great, now we can move on. The next test will simply assert that a heart with 75% image fill has one empty heart piece. If you're just now tuning into the series, each 25% increment of image fill equals one heart piece. Again, to simulate this, let's set the test image's fill amount to 0.75. Now, let's assert that empty heart pieces equals 1. The test fails because empty heart pieces currently return 0 no matter what. Let's fix that by switching over to the heart class and inserting the obvious implementation. To figure out how many empty heart pieces a heart has, we need to subtract the number of filled heart pieces it has from the number of heart pieces per heart. Well, we know that a heart contains four heart pieces. It's stored right here in this constant, heart pieces per heart. And we also know how to find how many filled heart pieces a heart has, thanks to the logic we've already written here. So all we need to do is plug them both into the calculation. And that's the obvious implementation. Now, you may be wondering why I didn't reference the current number of heart pieces property in this algorithm. The reason is that I don't want to couple these two properties to each other. If I ever needed to change the logic of current number of heart pieces for whatever reason and somehow introduce an error, then that error would cascade to empty heart pieces. It may seem silly to worry about something that may never happen, but this could cause a huge headache in a medium to large sized project. It's not going to cost us much to protect ourselves in the long run here. And check it out, our tests pass, so now we can go ahead and refactor this duplication. I'll use ReSharper again to perform the extract method refactoring by selecting the algorithm and clicking Control Alt M. Let's call the method Calculate Filled Heart Pieces. Now we can use this in the empty heart pieces property. Let's rerun those tests. And we can move on. Now that we have the empty heart pieces property, current number of heart pieces is starting to feel like a weird name. I feel like it could be called filled heart pieces, right? That way we'll have access to the heart's empty heart pieces and filled heart pieces. Let's rename it using ReSharper by selecting it and pressing F2. Let's switch over to the heart tests so we can update the property's test class name. We have to do this one by hand. There, that wasn't so bad. Especially since we can just rerun the tests and ensure that we didn't break anything. Now we can move on. Alright, we need to finish up the heart container class. But it's been a while since we've worked on it. So let's refresh our memories by taking a look at the heart container tests. The first test is the base case. It passes zero into replenish on a heart container with one empty heart. This should have no effect, so it asserts that the target's fill amount is zero. The second test gives us some basic functionality. It's set up just like the first test, except it passes one into replenish. 
This time we expect the heart to gain one heartbeat, so it asserts that the target image's fill amount is 0.25. The third test introduces a little bit of complexity. Heart containers need to manage multiple hearts, so this one uses a heart container with two hearts, where the first one is full and the second one is empty. It passes one into replenish and asserts that the empty heart gain one heart piece, ensuring that the algorithm is iterating over the heart container's list of hearts. Of course, it shouldn't be blindly calling replenish on every heart in its list. So the fourth test passes one to replenish on a heart container with two empty hearts and asserts that the second heart remains empty. Now that we're all caught up, there's one last test case that we need to write before we can call replenish complete. The last thing we need to make sure that replenish does is distribute heart pieces correctly. We can see that it passes the same value into heart.replenish on each iteration. This means that if the number of heart pieces needs to be distributed across multiple hearts, that the last heart will always be replenished with the wrong value. Let's switch back to the heart container tests and add a new test. We'll call it distributes heart pieces across multiple unfilled hearts. Now let's create a heart container that has two hearts. The first one will contain three heart pieces, which we'll simulate by giving it an image that is 75% filled. The second one will be empty and will contain our target image. Now let's call replenish and pass in two for the number of heart pieces. We'll test the new behavior by asserting that the target image's fill amount is 0.25. It fails because the current algorithm passes two into each heart's replenish method, no matter what. Let's switch over to heart container and fix this. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of a clean way to implement this behavior. So we're just going to do the simplest thing possible to get the test to pass. First, let's check if the remaining number of heart pieces is less than the amount of empty heart pieces on the heart that we're currently iterating over. If it is, then we'll pass that value into replenish and break. Again, it's not pretty, but look at that, the test passes. And now that we have a passing test, we can figure out how to make this read a little nicer. This will be important because we'll be basing deplete off of this algorithm when we're done. Now, the first thing we should do is rename number of heart pieces remaining to remaining heart pieces. That name has been bothering me because it's long and makes this method hard to read. Next, we'll remove this duplication. Instead of calling replenish twice, let's just store the argument value in a variable. Now we can inline this conditional statement. All right, this is looking a little better. Next, we should start using the empty heart pieces property that we just added to heart. First, let's replace this calculation. Then, let's use it as a value in our to replenish variable. Next, I know we just renamed the remaining heart pieces variable, but we don't really need it anymore. Let's just inline it and get rid of it completely. Lastly, number of heart pieces feels a little verbose, so let's rename it to just heart pieces. All right, I'm very happy with this right now. It's much easier to read and much easier to understand. And we can use it to write the deplete method, which we'll do right now. You should know the drill by now. First thing we need to do is create a failing test. Let's create a nested class in heart container test called the deplete method. Then add a private variable for the target image. Next, we'll initialize target before every test with the setup method.
and since deplete removes heart pieces, we'll set the target image's fill to 100%. Now, heart container doesn't have a deplete method yet. So let's create a base case test that'll get us an empty method stub. It'll basically test that passing zero into deplete has no effect. Let's initialize a heart container with a single heart that contains our target image. Then call deplete with zero as the argument. Then we can assert that the target image's fill amount is still one. Perfect, the test won't compile until deplete is created. So let's use Resharper. We'll select deplete, click alt enter, and select create method. And we'll name the argument heart pieces, just like we did for replenish. Now the test compiles and is passing, so we can move on. Our next test will be a simple one, but I'm going to use it to insert the entire implementation. It'll test that passing one into deplete on a heart container with a full heart causes that heart to lose a single heart piece. Let's create a heart container with a heart that contains the target image. Then pass one into its deplete method and assert that the target image has a fill amount of 0.75. It fails, so now we can switch over to the heart container and drop in the logic. Referencing how Replenish works, we'll start by looping through the heart container's list of hearts. But this will be a little different, since we need to deplete from right to left. So let's reverse the list by getting an enumerable and calling link queues reverse method. Now, let's create a local variable called to deplete. That'll store how much we need to deplete on each iteration. It'll mirror the replenish methods to replenish variable, except it'll use filled heart pieces instead of empty heart pieces. Now, let's decrement heart pieces and call deplete. And if heart pieces is less than or equal to zero, we'll break out of the loop. And there you have it. Let's run those tests. Beautiful. They pass and heart containers replenish and deplete methods are finally complete. Let's go ahead and add one more test though. I want to be sure that distribution works. So we'll create one called two sets full image to 75% fill after distribution. I'm sort of experimenting with my naming convention here. I think I like how this sounds a little more than what we use for the replenish method. For this test, let's create a heart container with two hearts. The first one will contain the full target image. And the second one will contain an image that is 25% filled, simulating that it has one heart piece. Now let's pass two into deplete and assert that the target image's fill amount is 0.75. There, this makes me feel a lot better. The tests pass, and I think we can call this done for now. I think it's time to see this baby in action. Previously, we've been using this mono behavior called app to demo a single heart, but we're going to update it so we can demo our completed heart container class. First thing we'll do is add a list of images. This will be a serialized property, so we can set it from the editor. Then, let's add a heart container property and initialize it from the start method. For its constructor, we'll transform our list of images into a list of hearts using some link queue magic. Now, let's replace the calls to heart in the update method with calls to heart container. Up arrow will trigger replenish, and down arrow will trigger deplete. And as an added bonus, let's create another serialized property called amount, and use it in replenish and deplete. That way, we can experiment with a couple of different values. And that's it.
In this video, we refactored lots of code and finally completed the Heart Container class. In part 7, we'll create a simple implementation of player health. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and hit subscribe with notifications on. And feel free to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching!